the 2K Sports pregame show, sponsored by Sprite. Hello again, everybody. This is Ernie Johnson. Welcome to 2K Sports. Glad to have you with us and the legendary Shaquille O'Neal sitting alongside. Tonight, it'll be the Golden State Warriors going up against the Charlotte Hornets. And looking at the Hornets, they went 2-0 against this team last season, looking to continue that string of victories tonight. You know a guy I love to watch play, and, and opponents of his do not really enjoy it, is Al Jefferson. Al, baby fundamentals, Jefferson, he's come a long way, Ernie, grown up in a small town, Prentice, Mississippi. Ernie, check this out. His first hoop was a foot bath with the bottom cut out. Come on. Yes, a foot bath with the bottom cut out. Huh. So now they run their whole offense through him on the left block. The Celtics used to call it the Al productive spot. Ah, very interesting. And a foot bath with the bottom cut out. How do you know that? Because he has stinky feet. Oh, and now you know the rest of the story. Here's Kevin Harlan. got NBA basketball in store for you. We're live at the Oracle Arena in Oakland, California. The home of the Warriors, live on 2K Sports. Last game for the Hornets, the loss to Phoenix. Yeah, they were really in a funk from the field, guys. Credit the defense, definitely, but you know, even when they got open looks, they were not hitting. Hey, Steve, me and you flub up words and misstate things on occasion. So do these players have bad nights. It happens. <laughs> And a look at the starters for the Hornets. Perry in the backcourt. It's Walker and Henderson at the three. MKG and Cody Zeller at the four. And it's Jefferson in at the pivot spot, manning the middle. Draymond Green last season slimmed down to about 230 pounds. Pretty remarkable how he's transformed his body since his freshman season at Michigan State. Now here's Curry after Henderson's miss. Curry dishes to Barnes. Thompson inside the line. Green for two points. Thompson's got the first points up on the board here for the Warriors. And so here's Charlotte. Zeller setting the pick for Walker. Kid Gilchrist, a screen on Thompson. Shots good by Walker. Well, some weak defensive coverage there, and I'm pretty sure they didn't plan on starting this game out like that, giving such easy access to the rim. Now here's Thompson. Really played well against Brooklyn in his last outing. And Tremont Green picks up the foul. That is his first foul of the game. Obviously, he's not afraid of physical play, but he still needs to play in control. And he definitely wasn't in control that time. Everybody in the building knew it was an over-the-back call. And Walker kicks to Jefferson. Let's it go from 14. 
will not go. This is off the front iron. Green with a screen for Curry. So first quarter just over a minute and a half in. Can't connect from short range. Outside, Walker. Outside, Jefferson. And Walker kicks to Kid Gilchrist. Six to shoot. Some nice pass in here by Charlotte. Jefferson trying to break loose. Again, the miss by Walker. It's stolen by Jefferson. Tries from 10. Jump shot is good that time. Now, here's Curry. He really was a guy who also stepped up in that win against the Nets. The feed to Bogut. Thompson outside. And fouled hard that time. He'll get to the line and shoot two. Well, it's really hard to find a more pure, accurate shooting stroke than Clay Thompson. I mean, every season over 40% from distance, but he's working to diversify his offensive game. You know, he's posting up and using his ball handling skills to get inside some. And Thompson worked hard on his explosiveness and finishing. He predicted, Steve, a poster dunk last season and deliver against Kyle Singler. Remember that? the Pistons? Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, he's been trying to go inside more, and last year... He thought, you know, he'd have to work at it to get to the line more. Only averaged about two free throw attempts per game for his career. So that's the next step for him to be more aggressive attacking. Here's Curry following the basket by Gerald Henderson. Curry. And he connects on the jumper. The screen did the trick. Curry's got his first basket of the night. You know, the defense didn't exactly try to fight around that screen, and that's why it turned into the easy basket. Outside, Walker. Pass to Kid Gilchrist. Oh, that's blocked. And first quarter, we're about three and a half minutes in. Well, I think he had all the space he needed. He just couldn't find the bottom of the net. The kick out to Walker. It's Henderson on the wing. Feeds to Zeller. Now the pass to Henderson. Down to five on the shot clock. Step back, jumper is good. Henderson's got his third basket of the night right there. Sometimes folks forget about his decent mid-range jumper. He can knock those down all game given a chance. There's the dish to Green. Three-pointer. Good, and Curry gets the assist. And that makes it a tie ball game. A good open look, and he splashes home the three. The Hornets have gone 50% from the field to this point, 4 of 8. Now it's in it down to Doris Burke, who was able to talk with head coach Steve Clifford. He talked about the impact of opposing big man Andrew Bogut, saying there just aren't that many seven-footers with his kind of game. A great interior defender first and foremost. We can't get tunnel vision when we attack the rim. He's got size and strength, and we can't allow him to bully us for offensive rebounds. Let's see if they can keep Bogut from having a big game, guys. Thanks, Doris. Here's Curry. Michael Kidd Gilchrist making his last shot. Out to Thompson. Six to shoot. The three from Barnes. Goes back up. And he gets it to go. Guys, he's actually indefatigable. He never gives in, never gives up on a play. And that's what it takes to be a great offensive rebounder. You've got to be relentless. Now here's Henderson. 11-point game, his last outing. Kid Gilchrist, the pass to Walker. He dishes it to Henderson. He feeds it to Kid Gilchrist. Kicks it to Henderson. From 12 feet out. No good. And it's the Warriors taking it the other way. They're coming off that win against the Nets. And I thought, guys, they were the beneficiary of what was a, some lackluster defense being played against them. I agree with you. I mean, it was really shocking how many free runs to the hoop they got. The Hornets have gotten five of ten shots to drop in this game so far. Right at the 50% mark. And Walker kicks to Anderson. And he banks in the layup. 
Henderson's got eight points. His shooting's been outstanding. Definitely one of the reasons his team is up in this game. Curry against Walker. Outside Curry. The drive by Green. Draymond Green was the 35th pick back in 2012, and he's made an impact thus far with his defense, rebounding, and great IQ for the game. And I like his competitive spirit, too. He helps you win in a lot of ways. And Green more of an offensive player at Michigan State. I think he's still adjusting to the added distance on the NBA three-point arc, but shot it really well in the playoffs last year, so just getting better and better every year. At this break in the action, we can show you the teams that had the most rebounds last season. Number five, the Warriors. That yeah, was an impressive campaign for their big men, and I thought the whole team did a really nice job of getting bodies on people and really boxing out. Hornets have gotten six of 11 shots to go down so far. Pretty nice shooting. And Green, very vocal, very outspoken. He's occasionally rubbed, in fact, opponents the wrong way. Yeah, never shy about contact either, Kevin. He can get under opponent's skin at times, but if he's your teammate, you love what he brings to the table. And so he earns a trip to the line. Officials saw the contact, and he'll shoot two. Well, Steph Curry, of course, deadly from outside the arc, but last season he tried to improve his ability to get to the rim. In fact, he significantly increased his points in the paint last year. The Warriors have shot 75% at the line tonight, going three for four. And they now lead as the free throw drops for him. And for Curry, improving his driving ability. He already had the hand, but... He tried to work on his strength to ward off contact. And, Kevin, you know, film study is, is also playing a role in that progression and development. And he not only improved his finishing ability inside, he also got to the line more often, a result of being more confident in his strength. They grabbed their own miss. This touch has disappeared on him this fourth. He just hasn't been able to get it going. To the wing right side. Bogut down low. He's covered by Kid Gilchrist. And Andrew Bogut, the bucket on the assist by Barnes. You know, when he's in that tight with that kind of height advantage over the defender, that's going to be a pretty easy play for him. Curry against Walker. He kicks it to Kid Gilchrist to the right side. Bonley dishes to Henderson. Shot clock at five. Charlotte, no good that time either. That's a very low percentage shot. Not good basketball at all. One he probably should have passed on. Deflects the pass and stolen by Vonley. And he takes it in for the layup off a very nice feed. Zeller's got his first points of the night. Beautiful work in the transition game. That's how to do it. Attack early before the defense can get itself set. Pass to Thompson for the three. Good, and Curry gets the assist. Thompson's got six points. Offensively, he can be the engine that drives them at any given time. Henderson with a screen on Barnes. Walker against Curry, and it's Kid Gilchrist penetrating. Here's Henderson. A beautiful reverse layup. He's got 10. And they're beginning to fall apart a little bit defensively, especially inside. Well, that's four straight buckets now at the rim. And the Warriors decide to take their first time out here. You think of the Warriors as a really strong team, and they are, but this might surprise you a bit. They had trouble with teams in the East. They lost to some of those teams in the Eastern Conference you would have expected them to beat last year. And the Warriors with a completely new five on the floor. The Hornets also changing it up. Marvin Williams has checked in for Zeller. Lance Stevenson comes in for Kid Gilchrist. And Brian Roberts subbed in for Gerald Henderson. That's good. And the Warriors lead by five. Well, the Warriors had some off-shooting nights, certainly, as you guys were talking about, against the East. Definitely gave up some games because of it last year. Well, and as poor as they actually shot against the East, the Warriors still won 20 games 
against the conference. So it just shows you how talented this club is. Marvin Williams, a former number two pick out of North Carolina back in 2005, now in his 10th season in the NBA. And Williams never a star, but he is a quality defender and able to space the floor. You know, you got to take him for what he is, and that's really a solid rotation player throughout his career. Kevin, there are only 25 to 30 all-star caliber players in the league, maybe 35. After that, everybody else is a role player, and you have to understand that and embrace him and accept it. Here is Livingston. Dishes it to Iguodala. Passes to Holiday. A three-pointer off the mark. Take a look at the rebound totals, guys. That's plus five now on the glass. And, Steve, I don't think there's any question which team came out with more energy and enthusiasm. Now here's Williams. Stevenson drives in. Foul call that time on the way up. That'll give him two chances at the free throw line here. Lance Stevenson, a most improved candidate for the Pacers last season, he said vehemently that he was staying with the Pacers despite his impending free agency. But something must have changed. Not quite sure exactly what it was. He ended up taking a deal with the Hornets for less guaranteed money. I think partly driven to get to the end of that second contract quicker. Here is Livingston. Holiday attacking. And Spates with the basket on the assist by Holiday. Nice pass. That one was right on target. Hornets trail by four. And the base is offered Stevenson, I think, five years at about $44 million. He signed with the Hornets for, what, three years and just over $27 million. Yeah, you know, it's not like the Hornets blew the Pacers off the table with their offer financially. I mean, so I've got to think there was something more to Lance's decision. And part of it may have been desiring a bigger role. Here is Livingston. From deep three-point range, Holiday gets the bucket. How about the passing there? Moving the ball without any thought, without any agenda. It's hard to overstate all the points they've scored on assists today. Beautiful to watch. Now, here's Stevenson. Four-point game. Outside, Walker. Iguodala against Stevenson. Puts it up from 12, and Lee pulls it down. Golden State's gone 3 of 5 from three point land so far in the ballgame. Iguodala, no good. Would have been lucky to knock that shot down. Yeah, that kind of shot will definitely get you the high brows from the coach and maybe get you a seat on the bench, too. Now, here's Walker. 11 points for him in that last game against the Suns in Phoenix. I thought his rebounding was impressive as well. As he made some big boards, really helped out on the glass, helped his team out big time. Here is Livingston. Now the feed to Lee. Pass to Iguodala. Screen by Lee. Iguodala with it. Williams picks him up. The wide open look here for Holiday. From outside, off the mark. They time it right. They can end this quarter with a two for one. Yeah, that's the smart move there. That's how you want to end the quarter, but make sure you get a good solid possession here. Now, here's Walker. Five points in the game. Stevenson drives in. Walker's shot is off. Tough three-point try there with a hand in his face. Boy, you'd be lucky to make that one against great defense. Put it. Feeds the lead. And Holiday kicks to Lee. Uses both hands to slam it down. An indication there of why the scoreboard looks like it does. Very passive defense. But the finish was anything but passive. No, he hammered that down, Clark. Superb above the rim action. And so the first quarter is in the books. The Warriors on top. They're up by six. Let's take a quick break now, and then it's on to the second quarter after this. Hey, Mr. Venom. Uh-huh. Yo. Hola. Tune in Monday, November 17th. Anthony Davis and the New Orleans Pelicans go on the road to do battle with the Portland Trailblazers. Be there.
and the first quarter is in the books. Second about ready to get underway. And the Warriors guys, what jumps out to you in this game uh, stance-wise? And they've done a nice job here offensively to establish a rhythm and a pace to this game. And I like that they're finding ways to score. Playing well here, Steve. Hornets trail by six. So on the floor for Charlotte to start this second quarter. MKG and Marvin Williams holding down the forward spots. Ryan Roberts out there with Lance Stevenson. And it's Jefferson in at the five spot. And Roberts kicks to Stevenson. Shot clock at six. Let's it go from 11. That one a tad offline to the right, but drops in for him. Stevenson's got the opening field goal of the second quarter for the Hornets. Here is Livingston. Iguodala dishes to Livingston. On the wing, Green. He's guarded by Williams. Iguodala, no good. That's a shot that he sometimes struggles with, but you can't fault him for taking it when the defense backs off like that. And we're starting the second quarter, about a minute gone. Roberts passes to Jefferson. And Roberts kicks to Stevenson. No good from outside. Warriors leading by four. Throws it up high, and it's Barnes slamming it down. Phenomenal alley-oop slam right there, guys. They're taking advantage, Clark, of a team that looks lost out there. Mm, yeah, this is threatening to get kind of ugly. out here. Stevenson with it. He's coming off a 16-point game against the Suns in Phoenix. And keeping us updated from the sideline, let's swing it over to Doris Burke for an update. Hi, Doris. Well, Kevin Al Jefferson, a veteran leader, and he's changed the Hornets locker room. A former coach, Doc Rivers, said, you know the people in your life who just bring sunshine? That's Al. He brings it wherever he goes. And guys, Big Al said of his young teammates, I don't talk much, but they really wanted to listen. Joy is just an easygoing guy. Great presence. Thank you. And a generous spirit, too, Kevin, is Al Jefferson. I mean, in Utah, he never hesitated to mentor their young guys. The rebound by Azili. And they forced the miss with that good defensive rotation. They're playing well together as a unit. Here is Livingston. Back to Igudala. A three ball. That drops and it comes off the assist from Livingston. Got himself going with the triple. His first basket of the game. Hornets trail by nine. Clark, they've been struggling here on offense. Yeah, a little bit of cotton mouth here. Dry spell for sure. Stevenson dishes to Jefferson. And it's off the back rim. No good. Warriors have gone two of four shooting the ball here in the second. Pushes in for a double-digit lead. See the way he times his passes so well. That was a great assist. Hornets have gotten off to a rough start here in the second fourth. Going just one for five. Charlotte was not bad on the road last season. Had some, some good road wins. Much improved now from where they were in years past. But still some room for improvement. And the Warriors with some changes. Thompson comes in for Andre Iguodala. And Curry subbed in for Sean Livingston. Cody Zeller's checked in for the Hornets. Henderson comes in for Lance Stevenson. And now Doris Burke has an update from the sidelines. Hey, guys, I got a chance to hear what Steve Clifford was saying to his team. There was one thing he stressed above everything else, and that was getting the ball into the low post. That is where their points can and should be coming from in his mind. He also wants them to concentrate on working as a team at the offensive end. 
passing, patience, and teamwork. Those were the messages. Being in the position they're in, probably a smart move to go to the clipboard and switch things up while we're still in the first half. Kevin? Thanks again, Doris. Barnes against Kid Gilchrist. The drive by Green. Zeely. And he makes no mistake on the slam dunk. Boy, he threw out some punishment with that two-hand throwdown. Well, now's the time to do it. Keep attacking that rim. Hornets trail by 11. And, you know, you go back to the year before when Charlotte had the worst road record in the league. And last year, just just leaps and bounds ahead of that. And a lot of credit to that coaching staff and also those young players growing up and maturing a bit. Shot by Roberts, no good. Warriors leading by 11. Green with a screen for Curry. And there's the pass to Azili. Henderson pulls it in. Couldn't convert, but nice little two-man game there. And it wouldn't surprise me to see them go back to that the next trip. Roberts passes to Kid Gilchrist. Can't hit. Great tee that time from Curry. That was a layup. And you've got to knock that down. You've got to convert when you get those opportunities. Off target at the rim. You see the defenders get out of his way a lot of times when he's on his way to the bucket, but not that time. It's stolen by Green. Jefferson against Thompson. For the three. Good, and Curry gets the assist. Thompson's got nine. Another pass put right into the shooter's pocket, right in the shooting pocket for a terrific assist. They've done a lot of that today. Yeah, it's something we haven't seen much of at the other end of the floor. Though. And Kid Gilchrist gets it to go in. And here is Curry. The dish now to Thompson. From downtown, it's rebounded by Charlotte. Here's Roberts. Kicks it to Henderson. Let's it go from the wing. The rebound by Azili. That's a shot he's got to hit. You don't get too many better looks from that range. Outside Curry. Battles through traffic and lays it in. Azili's got the lead up to 14 now for the Warriors. Charlotte shooting around 40% from the floor here. And the Hornets call time here. Steph Curry known for his great shooting, and rightly so, but a well-rounded player. In fact, he tied for second in the NBA last season with three triple-doubles. The Warriors making a switch here. Bogut's checked in. Here's Roberts, guarded by Curry. Jefferson kicks to Kid Gilchrist. I'll drop your jaw. Curtain, we can shut it down now. Because that one, we won't see anything better than that fella. Oh, come on, Clark. Maybe he'll do it again. No, he won't <laughs> top that effort. No hey, way. I wouldn't put it past him, Clark. This guy's a crowd pleaser. And Steph Curry's first triple-double, how about this? It happened early last season, and it only took him three quarters of play. 
And what was an early statement game for the Warriors against the hapless Sixers, Steph showed them who was in charge that night. Green with the ball. He's against Zeller. Here's Thompson. Layup off the pick. And he sinks the layup. Thompson's got 11. That's been a great day for him. And if you remember, he gave them a huge performance their last time out as well. And Steph Curry, Steve, one of the best rebounding point guards in the NBA throughout his young career. Yeah, not the strongest or the most explosive athlete, but incredible coordination and anticipation. And uh, so his feel for the game allows him to figure out where to be before everybody else on the floor. Warriors leading by 11. Green with a screen for Curry. Let's it go with a three. It's rebounded by Jefferson. Jefferson's got his third rebound on the night. Green with a screen for Curry. Over in the corner, Barnes. Back to Curry. Here's Bogut. And a great assist by Curry as that one goes in. Curry's got his fifth assist in this one. Hornets trail by 13. Here's Roberts looking for his first basket still in this one. Brian Roberts coming to the NBA two seasons ago after playing internationally. Had a great season as a 27-year-old rookie. Last year with Drew Holiday injured, he actually spent a lot of time at the starting point guard spot in New Orleans. And Roberts is more of a shooter than a true point guard. A bit of a combo guard is how I would describe him. He's a good ball handler, decent size, but his assist to turnover ratio fell off in year two. That should also be an area of focus for him. And Thompson kicks to Curry. Green with the ball. He's against Zeller. Five to shoot. Thompson misses. He certainly didn't take advantage of the poor defense, but they can't count on him to continue missing. No, that's for sure, because this guy's too good of a shooter to miss that look consistently. And Walker kicks to Roberts. Got it, and the Warrior lead has been cut to just nine points on the basket from Jefferson. And Brian Roberts, very quick and elusive, but Steve, not a big-time penetrator or finisher inside. No, but he might look to drive to draw contact a bit more because, uh, you know, last season he was the league's best free-throw shooter at 94%. Green, no luck. I thought he'd make that one. And that's his range, and the defense, nowhere to be seen. And then Henderson with the jam. Now that's finishing your work right there. Powerful two-hand jam, you're right. Uh, if he's got a few more of those in him, uh, this lead will really start shrinking. Pass to Kirk. And lots of contact there. Missing the shot, he'll shoot two. Kemba Walker picks one up. Cody Zeller, a first-round pick back in 2013, one year after his brother Tyler Clark was taken in the first round. You know, that's happened only two other times in NBA history, Kevin. The Plumley brothers, Miles and Mason, also taken in 2012 and 13. Miles drafted by the Pacers back in 2012. And then back in 87 and 88, the Grant twins, Horace and Hart. Spades with a screen on Walker. Dishes to Thompson. Launches a three. Good, and Curry gets the assist. Curry's got six assists in the game. He's certainly starting to heat up from outside. That's his third for the game. His second in this quarter. It's Henderson on the wing. The Warriors pull it in. Curry's got his fourth rebound in this one. And they've got a big lead, not just on the scoreboard, but in the rebounding department too, Clark. Yeah, it's been a really gritty performance. They'll have some bruises to show for it, but that's the way it should be. You should feel that you've competed when you do that work inside. Zeller dishes to Vonley. Trying to find Henderson, gets it to him. The fadeaway off the left rim and out. Oh, that's a frustrating one there. Easy look at the hoop. Spades with a screen on Walker. Curry outside. Campbell Walker with the rebound. Well, it's just been one of those kind of games for him. He feeds it to Roberts. Thompson with the block. And that's out of bounds. Charlotte will retain possession. Some changes for Golden State. Lee's checked in for Bogut. And it's Livingston in for Steph Curry. 
and a switcher also for Charlotte. Lance Stevenson's checked in for Brian Roberts. Henderson kicks to Walker. Bonley setting the pick for Walker. Off the pick. No good. And Golden State will go the other way with it. Well, they've got the Lakers ahead of them after this game. In the next game, it'll be played in Los Angeles. That will be a getaway game for them, a one-game road trip. Thompson passes to Livingston. Right side, Lee. Thompson, left side. For three. And that is good. Thompson's got 19 points. Absolutely on fire from beyond the arc. Yeah, that's where he's getting his points. Henderson kicks to Walker. 58 seconds left in the first half of basketball. He dishes it to Zeller. It's Henderson on the wing. They need this. Thompson with the rebound. Well, an eight-rebound advantage like the one they have now is always going to swing the score hard in that team's direction. And that's certainly been the case today. Their rebounding has made a huge difference. Livingston kicks to Holland. Passes it to Livingston. Out to the right wing. Holiday dishes to Thompson. Yes, and it's Holiday with the assist that time. 22 points for him. There's six points on consecutive three balls. They're finding holes in this defense. It should be easy to correct, though, if you start making the right rotations defensively. Outside, Walker. It's Henderson on the wing. And he gets the bucket. Henderson's got four points this quarter. Now Thompson. A dominating first. half of basketball and so far hasn't been close. Warriors lead by... Well guys, I'm here with Al Jefferson. We're getting back to the action now. It's been a one-team show so far. We'll see if that changes here in the third. Clay Thompson has been sensational. I like that he didn't force anything in that first half. His decision-making was really flawless. That being the case, Steve, I think they want him to be more assertive in the second half. Look to take more shots. Be a little more shot-hungry, even the tough ones. Thompson and Barnes, the two and three. Down low, it's Green and Bogut. And it's Curry in at the point guard position. So that's the group out there for Golden State. Thompson for the triple. It's rebounded by Charlotte. Zeller's got five rebounds tonight. Zeller setting the pick for Walker. He kicks it to Zeller. In the corner, Henderson with it. Off the mark there with the three-point shot. You know, Golden State historically has always been a dangerous offensive team, but it's really their defensive improvement that triggered their elevation into the upper echelon of the NBA now. The feed to Barnes. Six on the shot clock. Thompson outside. Launches it. Outside for Curry. Fires the three. And the Warriors miss again. Been a cold spell for them coming out of the half, missing their first three shots. A tough start. Kid Gilchrist, a screen on Thompson. Walker with it. Picked up by Thompson. The kick out to Walker. Charlotte moving the ball around. And it's Kid Gilchrist penetrating. Fader on the way. And he gets it to go. Kid Gilchrist has got the first points to start out the third quarter for the Hornets. And the defensive improvement for Golden State has kind of been piece by piece. They've had the right strategy and motivation, certainly, from the coaching staff. And obviously, Steve, a healthy Andrew Bogut has helped. 
Yeah, I'm just impressed with what they've done the last couple of years in terms of their attitude, their, their personnel, uh, the, the mindset to become more defensive-minded and a much better rebounding club as well. Okay, well, let's check in with Doris Burke reporting from our sideline in this game. Doris, take it away. Kevin, there's no doubt in Charlotte a much improved defense last season. Coach Steve Clifford said to take the next step, we're going to have to become more balanced, play the same level of defense, and do a better job offensively. We need more aspects to our offense. For one, consistency getting up the floor and attacking before the defense is set. Can they do it? We'll see, guys. They've added some pieces, Doris. We'll see how they do. Thanks. It has not been an ideal start to the second half. They've missed three of their first four. Curry kicks to Thompson. Bogut with a screen on Henderson. Thompson for the triple. And Thompson sends it back. And now in transition, it's Barnes. Here we go. Oh, a nice defensive play to disrupt the alley-oop. Henderson passes to Walker. Pass to Kid Gilchrist. Launches it. And the basket good. Eight points now in the game for Walker. The defenders need to talk to each other. The communication lacking there on that three-pointer. And now here is the 2K leaderboard with the list of the NBA's best teams from three-point land a year ago. The Warriors, fourth. Seemed like they went through stretches, guys, where they just didn't miss from beyond the arc, and that carried those numbers right up to the top of the list. Curry against Walker. Bogut says a screen for Barnes. And finished off by Bogut. Come on now, young fella. Watch out. You might bring that whole basket down on top of him. I didn't think he was ever going to let go of the rim. <laughs> He's just enjoying the moment up there. Charlotte calls timeout. Clay Johnson with a strong contribution so far in this one. He's dialed in from long range. They've got to stay in his hip pocket and deny him the catch. Hornets trail by 17. Outside, Kid Gilchrist. And two free throws coming up as he misses that one. Drawing the whistle and a lot of contact there. Michael Kidd Gilchrist missing six weeks last season with a broken hand, and frankly, he took a step back overall. His numbers getting worse almost across the board. And a player taken second overall two years ago. A lot of pressure hiding on the shoulders of MKG. You know, sometimes guys fall into draft positions that don't necessarily match their skill level, but you can never question the work ethic of this young man, and you know he's going to maximize whatever he can be as a pro because of that. It's Curry with the drive, and it goes as the official calls the foul. Count it. He'll shoot one more at the free throw line. Well, he wasn't phased at all by the bigger man on him, and on the low block, I thought he might be. You know, Steve, I thought maybe he'd prefer to bring him out to the perimeter, but whatever works, go to it. The Warriors have gone 6 of 8 from the free throw line tonight. Well, this is a club that shot 75% as a team from the free throw line last season. Outside, Walker. It's Henderson on the wing. Feeds it to Jefferson. Low block shot on the way. Thompson with the rebound. Thompson's got his third rebound tonight. And in the paint, they have really shown some strength. Their work on the boards has been phenomenal. Yeah, I'd certainly call it a mismatch, Steve, at least for today. And the whistle blows. It's going to be on Michael Kidd Gilchrist. Brian Roberts has checked in for Gerald Henderson. Here's Green. Now the pass to Thompson. Connects on the 17-footer. Thompson's got five points now in the quarter. Well, there you go. If you're going to continue to give up open jump shots, uh, you're not going to get back into this game. Zeller dishes to Kid Gilchrist. Curry against Walker. Kicks it to Roberts. Just five to shoot. Here's Jefferson. Money from the wing. Jefferson's got six. Smart. Use that big height advantage. Get the shot off. Well, it's hard to put a big man on him, Steve, that far from the hoop. I mean, he's versatile. Back to Curry. There's the dish to Barnes. Offensive rebound. 
outside for Curry. And here's Green outside. And a great assist by Curry as that one goes in. Curry's got nine assists now tonight. Hornets have gone a lackluster three of nine from the field since halftime. Zeller setting the pick for Walker. Looking for Jefferson, he gets it there. Hops loose off the pick and hammers it home. A free run to the hoop and some thunder on the finish. Not exactly the way the D would have drawn that one up. Mm -mm. And when you got the space, you might as well throw it down. That's what I always used to do. <laughs> Thompson for the triple. Al Jefferson grabs the miss. Jefferson's got seven rebounds in the game. Walker with it. And Curry picks him up defensively. And it's Walker penetrating and fouled hard that time. He'll get to the line and shoot two. That one on Thompson. Kemba Walker, quick. He's got a great handle on the ball. He's a blur in transition. And what I like about him, he's always looking to push the tempo from easy baskets. And he's tough, not afraid of, of the moment. Estes is Ely. He's jacked in for Golden State. Igudala comes in for Thompson. And a switch here also for Charlotte. Williams is checked in. Curry gets the bucket. He can be dangerous from outside. Sure, he didn't get one to go in the first, but we know he can get on the roll and knock him down. And Walker tough to stay in front of, but yet Clark, he's become a great finisher around the rim. Well, you know, you have to be able to do that at his size. He's listed at 6'1", which I think is really generous. He's more 5'10", 5'11". And he understands that's an area that he has to continue to expand and add to to be um, the potent offensive player he's capable of being. Curry kicks to Iguodala. Curry passes to Green. Golden State moving it around. Outside for Curry. Here's Azili. And a foul on the shot. He'll go to the strike for two. Festus Azili missing time last season recovering from his knee surgery. He's trying to regain his form after a rookie season which saw him start 41 games. And Azili re-injuring his MCL and PCL ligaments towards the end of his rookie season. He first strained that knee in his senior season at Vanderbilt. And the Hornets making a change here. Stevenson's checked in. And there's Al Jefferson on the assist by Walker. And that's now 10 points. Well, he certainly isn't the one to blame for them being in the hole. He's been on the money with his game. Curry against Walker. It's Curry with the drive. Iguodala dishes to Curry. Out left to the wing. Nobody near Barnes. Outside for Curry. Second shot opportunity. And that one's good. Curry's got eight points here in this quarter. One of the big stories is second chance point. They've just been terrific here in the second half in that area. And for Azili, only six years of organized basketball Clark prior to even entering the NBA. Yeah, he's young to the game, and you can see it sometimes in how he plays, but the size and athleticism he possesses are really valuable assets, and I think he's got a chance with work to be a uh, contributing player. Pass to Barnes. And foul called as he misses. He'll go to the line and shoot two. That's on Marvin Williams. Harrison Barnes, the seventh overall pick in 2012 out of North Carolina. He's got prototypical size and athleticism for that small forward position. Still developing his overall game, but he's got enormous potential. Looking at who's out there now for the Warriors. Spates comes in for Green, and it's Livingston in for Steph Curry. Monlays check in for the Hornets. Shots good by Walker. Took advantage of some shoddy defense there. They've got to at least get a finger on it. And Barnes, the top overall recruit in the nation, coming out of high school in 2010. Yeah, and really high expectations for him from a relatively young age. There's been some disappointment in his development, but with his work ethic, I think it's short-lived. Dishes it to Livingston. The three from Barnes. And the rebound goes to the Hornets. Been a poor shooting performance for him today, but luckily for them, a lot of his teammates have come through. And that one goes in as he is fouled. It'll be three points if he converts at the line. The Warriors making a switch here. And what do you guys think so far about the offensive approach for the Warriors? You know, one of the big stories has been the three ball. It's been a key part of their offense throughout the game. Oh, get it! Oh, watch out now! Wow. 
you're going to remember that one for a while. I know I will, Kevin. That was special. <laughs> oh, man, that was a circus dunk. Sean Livingston last season played really well for the Nets. He backed up Darren Williams, who was dealing with injuries, and also started for much of the year, helping keep the team afloat. And Livingston at 6'7", possesses rare size for the point guard spot. He uses his length defensively. He's able to play off his man and still has the ability to challenge shots and contest shots. So he's a smart, talented basketball player. And it's Stevenson missing. Warriors leading by 22. Holiday left side. He feeds it to Livingston. To the paint. Here's Iguodala. And it's good assisting on the play with Livingston. Iguodala's got five now. And Livingston, a reluctant long-range shooter, but aside from that, Steve, able to do a lot of things to help you win. Yeah, I love this guy. I mean, a stat sheet stuffer. He fills up a box score in every category, the length, the versatility, uh, the unselfishness, and the defensive awareness as well. Here's Roberts. Here's Von Lay. Williams passes to Roberts. And Walker kicks to Stevenson. Fires the three. And he gets it to go. Stevenson's got six here in this quarter. You might not think of him as a laser three-point shooter, but that shot was there for him, and he had to take it. 131 left in the third. Iguodala dishes to Livingston. Iguodala wide open. Again, Golden State. We've got 113 left here in the third quarter. Outside, Walker. There's a good screen. Stevenson drives in. And he gets the bucket. Stevenson's got 11 points. That's kind of his strong suit. The ability to find his way through the defense and finish at the rim. 52 seconds left in the third quarter. Passes it to Holiday. Livingston kicks to Holiday. Golden State moving the ball around. Golden State needs to get off a shot. And not sure what he was thinking there. Hornets trail by 21. Walker the pass to Williams. Back to Walker. He dishes it to Stevenson. And Walker kicks to Williams. The shot is off. Good D by Lee. Great defense in the paint there, making it tough on the offense. That's what he brings, a presence. I mean, you saw it on that miss. Iguodala's drive, and he jams it with authority. How about that now? What a sensational finish. Oh, got to be able to get some hang time to do that one. Yeah, you got to rise and... Levitate. Suspend yourself. Yeah, and levitate. Go and, and glide. Yourself. And glide. You got to glide in and reverse it home. So sweet. And as we conclude the third quarter, pretty much a blowout. It's been a one-sided affair. The Warriors on top, running away with it. And right after this, we'll bring you the start of the final quarter right here. The NBA season pushes on. James Harden and the Houston Rockets take on Marcus Gasol and the Memphis Grizzlies next Monday, 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 Pacific. And let's take this opportunity now to show you our State Farm assist of the game. Well, we might as well call it the State Farm play of the game. This was just a marvelous piece of coordination between two teammates completely in sync on the alley-oop. Warriors leading by 23. A moment now to reset the lineups. Back to us by Gatorade. All fueled up here for the fourth quarter. Setting the floor for the Hornets. 
Perry in the backcourt. It's Walker and Henderson. Zeller and Johnson are the bigs. And it's Stevenson in at the small forward position. Good on the three-point shot. Stevenson's got the fourth quarter going with the first basket of the period here for Charlotte. Walker against Curry. He kicks to Thompson. Jumper off the screen. No good on the shot. A bit long that time. What was the defense doing there? I mean, he is not the guy to give an open look to, and yet they got away with it. Walker against Curry. Stevenson right side. The tray. And it's Curry with the rebound. There's the feed to Holiday. Pulls up from the corner. The Hornets pull it in. Henderson's got three rebounds so far in the game. Outside, Walker. It's Henderson on the wing. Trying to break that ice cold streak. The shot's good on the assist by Walker. Boy, that was impressive, Clark. He did not hesitate to take the ball right up against the bigger defender. Boy, I like that aggressive mindset there, Steve. Curry kicks to Thompson. Bogut with a screen on Henderson. Thompson, count that one. No way you can get back into the game if you continue to give up layups. Barnes is checked in for the Warriors. Michael Kidd Gilchrist is checked in for Charlotte. Well, at this point, early in the season, still so much optimism for the season ahead. We all have our predictions, but there are always going to be some surprises out there, some surprise teams. And that's why we say all the time, that's why they tee it up and play the games. Anderson with it. Lock at six. Pulls up on the elbow, and it's rejected. And it's the Warriors on the break. Curry dishes to Johnson, and a foul called on the shot. Got him on the way up that time, so he'll shoot two right here. And early on, while teams are still gelling, still knocking the rust off, Steve, it creates kind of a period, wouldn't you say? Yeah, this is often where you'll see some upsets. You know, the talent you have on paper is one thing, but you got to produce on the court. I mean, teams really just getting put to their first tests. And so Thompson nails both of them. Well, Clay Thompson, the son of former number one draft pick Michael Thompson, but totally different games. His father was a big man who kind of played inside. Clay, a swing man, just a knockdown shooter from deep. Here's Jefferson. Green with the rebound. Green's got the glass covered here tonight. 11 boards for him. Bogut says a screen for Kirk. Thompson in the corner. And play stops as it looks like they call him over the back here. Obviously, he's not afraid of physical play, but he still needs to play in control. And he definitely wasn't in control that time. Everybody in the building knew it was an over-the-back call. They really want to find that igniter here. Yeah, that's right. Kevin, the offense has basically been running in place. they got to get going. And Clay's father, Michael, often his toughest critic, he tells Clay, most of the smaller <laughs> guards up and don't always stay away. Sounds I can just, hear him saying Oh, that my, that's good. why I'm laughing. <laughs> Sounds just like Michael, who knew how to handle himself with his back to the goal as a college and pro standout himself. Out of bounds, out of bounds Golden State takes possession. You always want a player to have his head up and to be surveying the court, but not if that's going to be the result. And the Warriors making a change here. Azili's checked in. Charlotte also making some changes. Biombo is checked in for Jefferson. Taylor comes in for Kid Gilchrist. And Daniel subbed in for Walker. And he gets it to go. Pretty much all of their buckets coming from inside the paint now. Yeah, that's five of their last six baskets inside the lane. They have really established themselves inside. Left side, Taylor. Left side, Taylor. Here's Daniels. And the Hornets miss again. Tough three-point try there with a hand in his face. Boy, you'd be lucky to make that one against great defense. The Hornets have gone two of seven from the field in what's been a cold start to the fourth quarter for them. Here's Henderson. That one wide left. More often than not today, those shots have not dropped for him. 
Curry, pass it to Green. Back to Curry. Pass to Thompson. Feeds it to Curry. And count it. Two points with a chance for one more at the free throw line. Might as well just take it into his own hands and make that big lead even bigger. Well, the Bobcats then, now Hornets, might have been a little bit late to the analytics movement, but that's going on in the NBA all over the place, and they're full-time on it now. Yeah, they're all over it. Last season, they had a half dozen of their staff devoted to analytics. Here's Biombo. Hits the jump hook. Here's Mark Biombo. And it's Golden State's ball. They've got a 12-2 run in progress. And for the Hornets, that's huge, having a bit of a numerical guide as to who to target in free agency because they aren't usually a big player in that respect. Here's the screen. Here's Henderson. Here's Daniels. A shot by Zeller, no good. Great job defending the hoop there. So important to have good presence defensively inside. Brandon Rush, who's checked in for the Warriors. Barbosa comes in for Steph Curry. And a switch here also for Charlotte. Hairston's checked in. And we know the Hornets definitely aren't as big a player in most free agent markets. That's pretty clear, small market team. They're usually at the bottom of the league in payroll. But they are making the most of what they spend now with their analysis. So trying to level the playing field a little bit. A shot by Thompson and no one's around. Can't nail the jumper. Charlotte has gotten off four three-pointers in the final quarter and two of them have fallen. Now here is Barbosa. He's covered by Daniels. Now here is Barbosa. They set the pick. And Rush kicks to Thompson. Knocks down the three ball. Johnson's got 37. The more touches he gets, the more this lead will grow. He has just been unconscious this quarter. No good from Hairston. Here's Golden State now. They're on a 15-5 run here. And here is Barbosa. Barnes dishes to Barbosa. On the wing, Thompson. Golden State moving it around. Here's Hairston. The shot's good on the assist by Daniels. Hairston's got five points now in the quarter. You know what? That's what you like to see. A perfect pass leading him right into the shot. Didn't even have to break stride. Barbosa kicks to Thompson. Off target with his three. Charlotte shooting the ball at 42%. Hairston, the pass to Biombo. Here's Taylor. No good off the front iron. He's not necessarily a strong inside presence, but... He needs to polish those chances off. Thompson dishes to Barbosa. Back to Thompson. Barnes kicks to Barbosa. Zeller grabs the board. Zeller's got nine rebounds in the game. Getting it done. Clark, they've been struggling here on offense. Yeah, a little bit of cotton mouth here. Dry spell for sure. And I think the work on the boards has been a big key for their success in this game, guys. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, it's been total control on the boards for them. Barbosa passes to Barnes. Looking for Rush. He gets it there. And the pass to Barbosa. Six on the shot clock. Rush dishes to Azili. That's good. Well executed possession. They controlled the shot. Nicely done. The Hornets shooting in the fourth quarter down around 31%, not playing with as much energy here lately. Daniels kicks to Zeller. I think we can all agree that the NBA has become a bit of a nicer, friendlier league over the past few decades. Less animosity with players and less brutal rivalries, but there is still a level of trash talking going on, and I think at times it's a factor in games. Thompson with it, and Zeller picks him up defensively. And Thompson kicks to Barbosa. And it's Barbosa again missing. Here is Harrison. Taylor attacking. It's rebounded by Golden State. 
Azili's got rebound number 10 tonight with that last one. Well, with what you guys are talking about, there are some known trash talkers in the NBA like Kevin Garnett, but overall it does seem to have come down a little bit in recent times. Well, a lot of that is because the league has cracked down on trash talking. The officials are much more likely to call a quick technical, so I think players have adapted and just gone about playing their game and, and not doing as much talking as in the past. Back to Barbosa. Kicks to Azili. Rejected by Biombo. Thompson against Hairston. Oh, and the dunk by Taylor. The D might need to body him up a little better next time. Get into him some. Yeah, Clark, they need to be a little bit more physical. You're yeah, right. You're you right. can't play this game, Saul. Yeah, but guys, you got to give him some credit for uh, attacking when he had the chance. Barnes passes to Azili. And there's the call on Cody Zeller. Both teams will make substitutions. Outside Holiday. In the corner, Igudala with it. Just five to shoot. The dish to Livingston. Let's it go. It's rebounded by Charlotte. A fast break now for Charlotte. Daniels is running. Missed inside. Guys, some great passing from him. Yeah, it makes it tough for the defense to chase that ball around when it moves that crisply all over the court. Yeah, it sure does, Clark. And look at the assist over We're piling up. I mean, this is, it's been a, a nice game execution-wise for this club. Well, that puts the nail in the coffin. A clinic in terms of how to play with the lead right there. Jacks up a three. No good. He's been anything but his usual self this quarter. It's actually been ugly to see. Here is Livingston. Igudala outside. To the wing right side. A shot by Holiday. Nobody around. And it's good assisting on the play with Livingston. Livingston's got his sixth assist on the night. And guys, with this one winding down, it's obvious to everyone who's watched it. I mean, just a total mismatch in a true show of strength for the Warriors. And this was one that never really was in doubt, I thought, Stephen Clark. Uh, an all-around dominant performance. Clark, and you kind of thought that maybe even going into the game. I certainly did, and they just cracked it open and made it an in seat. No contest. Yeah, I like that. And they took charge when it counted, and they'll be notching their ninth win overall. Well, one thing about this win, it assures that they will not lose the season series. They only meet once more, of course, as interconference opponents. And, Steve, when it is just a two-game season series, the team winning game one has a bit of an edge going into the second meeting, knowing they've... This one. Well, now's not the time to get complacent, though, Kevin. You've got to continue to put your foot on the gas pedal. Igudala left side. Here's the floater. Hornets shooting 38% from the field. A pretty weak showing for them. Here's Roberts. And there's the whistle. Fouled hard on the shot. He'll go to the line. It's going to be on Maurice Spates. Yeah, the referee's all over that one. No doubt about it. Clearly a foul. Nothing to argue about there. First free throw is good. Well, the Warriors taking strides to enhance their player development. They bought a D-League team and moved it to nearby Santa Cruz. And that team actually played in the D-League finals in the championship game. Practice with the NBA teammates, and that's got to be a positive. Iguodala kicks to Livingston. Holiday dishes to Iguodala. Pass to Lee. That ball's nice speed that time from Andre Iguodala. They certainly haven't let these fans down tonight. It's been a fun night to be in the building. It has been. I mean, the atmosphere's been great, and no doubt that helped with the winning effort. Here is Livingston. So we see the Warriors taking the game here. Some days, Clark, everything goes right for a team, and they just had one of those games. Yeah, it certainly was. I mean, these guys played a great all-around basketball game here. Thank you for joining us for this presentation of the NBA on 2K Sports. For Clark, Stephen Doris, and the rest of the crew, this is Kevin Holland saying thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Last but not least, here is your Jordan player of the game, Clay Thompson.